one for me. That's you. Okay. That's me. I'm live. Oh, good. Hey, everybody. How are y'all today? It's Monday here in beautiful East Texas. It's beautiful here. But we got a That's me, I'm live. bunch of rain today. Okay, so Doug's setting me up so I can see your comments. I see people popping in. Yay! I'm so happy. Makes me happy to see. When you arrive, type in your comment section down below. Um... Sandra, welcome from Florida. We're so glad you're here. Hey, Noel, how are you today? Oh, I'm so glad to see y'all are all popping in. So put a little comment so I can do a shout out so I'll just know you're here. That way I can um, say hi and I can kind of get a feel for where everybody's coming from. Genesis is here. Oh, do you like this? Isn't this awesome? I can say that because I didn't do it. I'm going to tell you all about it, though. Isn't that cool? I love it. I just love it. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, I'm so glad. Sandra says she's a newbie, y'all. But we're so glad. Once you're here, I have a... Uh, my Bible study morning, Sunday, we call it Sunday school teacher, says the first time you come, we're all, always delighted that you're here. We're even more delighted when you come back again. So that means that um, you had fun. So I'm hoping that this won't be your only time. Oh, and look, Pat is here. Hey, Pat. How are you, friend? So um, we have eight or nine people on. I'm so excited. Oh, hey, Mindy. Oh, so good. So good that y'all are here. I'm so delighted. Um, I hope everyone is having a marvelous Monday. I will tell you that here in East Texas, we have had what we call a, I'm from West Texas, and in West Texas, we call it a gully washer, and that means huge amounts of rain that create in flat, dry land, It they create gullies for the water to wash, you know, down, and they can happen anywhere the, anywhere at all. So we had a gully washer today. Doug and I had to get out and go to um, run a couple errands. And we got out fairly early this morning. And there were already pictures circulating of over by our hospital. The water up over the bottom edge of the door in the cars. I mean, it was crazy. Just really a lot of water. But it has cleared up somewhat. But I will tell you, I had a sweet friend. She may be here tonight. Hey, Betty. Um, they called me last Tuesday, I believe it was, and said, were you not feeling good on Monday night? And I was like, how would you know? When this weather, when these storms come through, I often get sinus pressure, headaches. It's like my brain is a barometer. And I can feel a storm coming in my head. It's ridiculous. But... I had one last week, and guess what? I have it again. It's that season, so sorry about that. I am really not complaining about it. At least I know weather is coming. Okay, friends, first off, I hope you've had a marvelous Monday, and secondly, I want you to know that I've prayed for you today. I pray for your well-being, for your health, for your peace, for your prosperity, um, and I will continue to pray for you. So thank you for being here. Know that you have been. Kathy's here. Hey, Kathy. So glad you're here. So tonight we're going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to talk about the Annie McHugs of Dresdens. And we are going to talk about the Dresden plates. And the reason we're going to do this is as I was preparing today and thinking about, you know, what we were going to cover and all. I looked over and realized that I had this awesome quilt, and it is, has been um, made by a girlfriend of mine. Her name is Carrie Dawson, and um, I taught her at a retreat one time. I had a class. We went to a retreat. We had a class during the day. Not everybody stayed, but some did, and um, she was there, 
and it lit something in that girl. She's a woman, but y'all know what I mean. It lit something in her like you cannot believe. So she came home and immediately jumped into t-shirt quilts and, uh, uh, oh my goodness, you just can't believe. I mean, she's like, kind of like, I see a lot of myself in her because she's just real enthusiastic about quilting and loves it and she works full time and it's hard to, so she stays up late on weekends so she can sew. So I totally understand that. So, um, th she made this quilt as a gift. I don't even now remember who she made it for. Normally, she comes over and she rents my long arm. I've taught her how to long arm, and she quilts them herself. But this time, this season, it's tax season and graduations and all kinds of things going on. So, she asked me if I would quilt this for her. She had gotten so far behind, which I, deli I mean, I was delighted to do that. But let's look at what she did. So the very first, I'll, we're going to deconstruct. This is how you deconstruct quilts, okay? So the very first thing she did was she took the center. This is a panel that she cut apart. And it was an extra large panel. You know, it wasn't just 24 inches wide. It was bigger than that when she bought it. But she took this portion and double framed it. And the, the person she's making this quilt for, these are their colors. And so she worked the beige into this um, print that has paisleys. You can see a little bit better here. And it has a little bit of the beiges in it. But it also has the blues and the purples. And so that's the person's favorite, favorite colors. Now, I know, she, I know Carrie um, probably... I don't know for sure how she made it, but I can tell you how I would have done it. I would have done this row, this row, this row, and this row all the way across. Then the side section here, a side section here, and then those all the way across the bottom and then put it together like a puzzle. One section, two sections, and then three sections. But isn't this awesome how she double bordered these and then just single bordered that? So then, after she got all of that done, the background, that's the background. So that would be your, um, you know, you can do a whole cloth or you can do pieced. So she pieced all this. Then she started making her Dresdens, and this is what the tool does. So here's the large Dresden, and she just used a quarter of the Dresden to frame this. And then down here, she used two of the quarter Dresdens to frame that. And then, for those of you who are new or haven't seen this, the tool set comes with the large Dresden that, that makes this size. And there are at least 40 some odd ways you can make different windows. And then the small Dresden makes this size. See that? So, she did um, full open windows here and alternated her colors. This color is actually in this little quilt, but look, she, I just think it's adorable. Oh, there's another, I don't know if y'all saw this one or not, but there's another quote down here. And then double, it did a double uh, border around it. But here's the deal on Dresden's. Dresden's are always top stitched on top of the background. Dresden's are an applique. And I have done a couple of hand stitched Dresden's, but normally I just machine top stitch. So I thought what we would do tonight is I'm going to show you how to use the tool. It's been a while and it might get this might give you some ideas on what you can do. Because all she did was took a panel and then put some um I'm not saying all she did like it was not a lot. It was good. I mean, it's great. It's fabulous. And then I wrote her today and said, can I show your quilt? And she was like, sure. So I hope she signs on. Hey, Catherine, I'm so glad you're here. So I'm going to tell you what I did. Um, when, I'm at, when I was at shows like Houston, Dallas, uh, Market, Festival, um, Tyler, wherever I am, I go in and I cut Dresden's and do demos the whole time. 
Well, I can tell you by the time I'm through cutting, you know, dozens of them, 48 of them, I'm tired of the fabric. That, But that's just me because I like lots of variety. So I went through my closet and found a whole huge stack of dressings that had already been cut and glued and work I'm going to I'm going to do something with these in just a little while but for those who are new this is just the upper window and this is what we're going to demonstrate tonight so I'm going to start at the beginning but I'm going to show you this in a different fabric and then we're going to come back to the little fish okay here is a strip of fabric and it is 10 inches wide and it is, um, it was with the fabric when I started, it was with the fabric. So I'm going to lay this here and I'm going to let Doug, for the people who are new, Doug is my husband and he's my cameraman. I just couldn't hardly do without him. Okay, I can do two layers at once or I can do single, just depending on how many I need. If this were with the fabric, I would just line that up. I'm going to do double. It's a little bit frayed because it's been in the closet with this other stuff, but that's okay. I can cut the frayed edges off, can't I? Okay. You can also use layer cakes. Um, because this tool is 10 inches tall. So you either use a layer cake or you use fabric uh, that is cut 10 inches. All right. So this will be our scrap. It's not, it's not bad for scrap. Okay, so now we have two blades. I'm just going to do one tonight, but I have two just in case. Okay, I can work from the top or I can work from the back. It's probably wiser to work from the back, and the reason is because um, sometimes whatever marking tool you're using, let me make sure I shut that, uh, won't be seen from the back. So you can use just a pencil, or I have friction pins that I love. Whatever marking tool you want. Now the reason I'm doing it heavy is so you can see it. If I have a real light, uh, if I have a really, really light line, you may not see it. Can you see that? Okay, good. Now, all of my Dresdens, this is not sewn together, so I'm going to show you something. All of these windows, do you see how that's folded back? That's what makes the clean folded edge around here. So, the way you do that, well, I'm going to use a honker because I don't have another one handy. I took them in the living room to work on stuff and I left them in the living room. So, I'll just be careful. Okay? So, maybe I did I think I did. I think I did fine. Okay, so now I have this cut out, but you see how I did it inside? A quarter of an inch is good. Or something like a quarter of an inch. Now, just like in Home Ec, we learned to snip to the corners. We snip so that we can fold these things back. Okay? Now, I'm going to put this on paper because I always want to protect my mat, even though this one probably would make a good, I don't know, what can you do when you recycle? Does anybody have any good ideas for recycling cutting mats? Because this one's about over. Okay, watch what I'm doing. I'm rolling this window back, and I'm starting in the corner and pressing to the center. See that? Now, y'all, I get it. Glue's not going to last forever. But glue will last long enough for me to get to the sewing machine. And I'm not using a fancy glue. I could, but I'm just not. Um, I'm pretty simple about things like that. 
glue has to be melted. The reason glue has to be melted is the stickiness, the gumminess, once it's the glue melts and it then cools, all the gumminess is gone. Make sure my iron is hot. And once the gumminess is, um, now look, once the gumminess is gone, then I can stitch through that and never have a problem at all. Now, I go to whatever fabric I want to fill this window. Pretend like, pretend like we're going to use this. It goes in that other one, but look how cute that is. If I wanted that to be, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. This actually would work kind of good. Um, I would glue this down. I would hit another little line of glue. I would turn this over and I would position this just like so. Get it where I want it. Finger press it. Make sure everything is on there good. See, I want to pull it down just a little bit more. I had it too high up. There. Perfect. Then I hit that with, I always, every time I glue, I have to iron. So that the heat will melt the glue. So there you go. There, the, there you go. Now I would do all of these. Then I would go to the sewing machine. And I would stitch all along the edge. And I would go all the way around. Top stitching. All the way around. It's that easy. Once that's done. The next step for making a Dresden. Is you fold it like this. You go to your sewing machine and you stitch all the way across just like that. Okay, I have a tiny one I can show you. Let me see if I can find the my undid one, but I don't see it now. Here it is. Okay, so I had a tiny one. See that little tiny one? Okay, I went to the sewing machine and I stitched it. I don't even know if you can see these stitches, but right, right along there, quarter of an inch, I stitched it. Well, when I stitch it, watch what happens when I flip this over. It makes the perfect little Dresden blade. So this tool is um, 30 degrees, and that means there are 12 Dresden blades in every full Dresden. So... Carrie didn't have a full Dresden, but here's nine, and then if she had added these, th these three to here, it would have made a full one. Okay, does that make sense? Questions so far? Hey, Kim's here, and Beth Ann is here. Hey, Beth, how are you, hun? I miss you. I miss Kim, too. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did. Y'all going to think I've lost my mind. Okay, I cut all these, I folded them, they're ready to make a full Dresden. I, uh, I haven't stitched them down, I'm telling y'all I made literally dozens and dozens of these and I got really, really tired of the fabric and it's been over a year now so I'm a little better. I mean, I can look at it again. I can, I... Do you see what I'm doing? I'm gluing this one back in. And I'll iron it. Okay. So I decided for y'all, just because of y'all and for you, I would show you this little project. And I started looking at it. And I started seeing this these funny little fish. So I decided that what I was going to do is I wanted, this is so wild, but I didn't want the full one, but I wanted the fat one. So let me show you what I did. After, I need to go stitch it down, but I haven't done that yet. But I decided, see, do you see? Let me draw on it. The bottom right here on the tool is a bridge. 
across the bottom of the bridge is where I drew that line. You see that? <laughs> Y'all are going to think I'm nuts. This is an inch right here. And I, uh, earlier, I decided where my cutter is. I'm just going to cut those off an inch below the window. So I took 12 of these. That's where I, all these little tiny ones, that's where they came from. You see that? Okay, so I took these. I did a whole 12 of them, cut them off, took them to my sewing machine, stitched all the way around the window, made sure this is all, you know, sewn together. The next step after you do that is you fold it and stitch it down and flip it out, which I did. So it looked like this. Then I took this bottom edge and I folded it under. And I have the center medallion of a kid's quilt that I will end up donating. But for but I made it for y'all so I could show you this. It was just, I, it just came to me today what I wanted to do. I'll hold it up. Do y'all like it? Hey, Lynn. Doug's waving at me, telling me to do something. I'm not sure what. Um, Lynn, I'm so glad you're here. Y'all look at this. These are little fish. And I had, this is where you can really have fun fussy cutting. If you look closely, let me see where they start. Here. Here's a fish bowl. And the fish are going to the right. It's like they're chasing each other. And they, and they have their mouths open. Look at that. Do you see that? And I thought, oh my word, they're chasing each other. And then, these are chasing that way. Anyway, I was like, I could tell a whole, I could make up a whole kid's story about the fish that chased each other. But anyway, this is the center medallion. Now, she didn't do a center medallion, but this would make a center medallion. And what I'm thinking is, if I can find any more of this fabric, y'all, I'm so tired of it. I don't even know if I have any more of it. I may have given it away. But if I can find any more, I'll do another border. And honey, if you'll hand me that, I can't reach it. I was thinking, y'all, let me put my glue away before I move on. Blind. Um, I was thinking this little fabric for borders. What do y'all think? Some little girl somewhere might like that, y'all think? This has the, I don't, I don't know if they can see the, cor the fabric real well or not. It's got the teals and the pinks and the greens in it. And then if I wanted to add something more, I could. But this, by the time I get done, you know, with borders, I can probably have, um, oh gosh, my eyes, 40 by 50 or 40 by 45 by 45 kids quilt to donate to the, um, to the kids that are here in town, the Salvation Army kids. So anyway, what all I did was I took a full blade and cut it, see? And then I just folded this under, ironed it, stitched this together, flipped it out. That's exactly how I made it, right there. And I like this little effect where it's um, got a big old circle in the middle. I think that's kind of a fun thing. Then I started wondering what would happen. Oh, my eyes. Gosh, I'm sorry, y'all. My allergies have gone crazy. The rain and the storms are bringing stuff in that my eyes are not used to. Whew. Okay, you see these little bitty ones? That was the tail end. I was wondering what what it would look like, and I'm going to play with this probably tomorrow or the next day, or, you know, who knows, it could be nine months from now, the way it, my world is. Y'all have filed taxes today, did y'all? Did anybody else file taxes today? Mine were rejected four times before they went through. Oh my gosh. What a headache. 
Why do we have to be so rich? That was a joke. <laughs> I hope y'all are laughing. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. This one is not finished. I opened it up. But look, something like that. Would that be cute? I'm thinking maybe or maybe in another part of the little, uh, you know, like somewhere else on the quilt. I could do half or I could do a quarter or something. So I'll dress it up somehow. But I thought this was a fun little um, way to use the scraps from the bottom. So anyway, that's what I was kind of playing with today. And I was kind of inspired by Carrie in her use of the, the small Dresdens and the large Dresdens. So I really liked what she did. I was very impressed. And I was happy to quilt it for her. It's always fun to quilt something that somebody makes like that. It's always fun to quilt somebody else's quilt is what the deal is. Okay, any questions? Um, oh, Betty, you filed a couple weeks ago. Good on you. I got started a couple weeks ago, but golly. I've never had taxes rejected. But it happened. Uh, you know, there's always first. And it's just money, so it's no big deal. Okay, so do y'all have any questions, any ideas, any comments, anything you want me to cover? Or I have a tip. For those of you who are new to quilting, make sure that in your quilting paraphernalia that you have a pair of tweezers. See those? I don't care what kind of tweezers you have. But I will tell you, when I got tweezers, it was like, I don't need tweezers. Oh, my word. It'll pull threads so much faster than your fingers will. It'll pull, like if if you uh, had Jack the Ripper out, you can um, stack threads and they'll stay back. It's just amazing what a pair of tweezers will do for you. So um, be sure and have one of those in your in your stash. Okay, I think that's all we're going to do tonight. Um, I know that was kind of short, but that's okay. I don't know if I told y'all or not, but I've started taking a, a Bible study class on um, the dreams of the Bible. And it is on, um, it's a teacher that is teaching it on, um, what am I trying to say, on YouTube. And it's from, uh, from three to five. Is that right? Yes. It is from 3 to 5, the first part, and then 5 to 7 is the second part, and it's three days a week. So it's an intensive. So when I get through doing that, or in the middle of doing that, I'm trying to get ready for y'all tonight. So um, for the next few weeks, I may, we may not go long. We may, we may be short because I've got so much going on. But every day at the end of the session I try to read one of my devotionals and one of the things I've written so we're going to do that again tonight and because it rained so hard all day long and we had so much flooding that um when I saw this one I thought yeah that's the perfect one it's called house upon the rock and I wrote it in December and um, so here goes I shared before my love of houses even as a little girl, I loved houses. Of course, they were pretend houses with sticks and stones as the dividing line between the rooms. You may not have known that for a few years in the 80s, I sold real estate. Oh, I loved it. It ended in the late 80s when the market crashed. So that's when I went to work to get a regular paycheck. In the 90s, Doug and I decided to move out of the DFW er, uh, area to a small town. We lived in Grapevine and we moved to Decatur. One day we were driving around through Decatur and I saw a house with a sign that was for sale. And it was the sign was in the yard and it said for sale. And I said, Doug, that's it. That's our house. And he said, don't you think we should go in and look first? I just love that practical approach of his. But I knew deep down that we would live there. And we would love living in that home. We bought that house. 
It was a 1930s craftsman style. It had great bones. Mm -hmm. It was built on solid ground and we found it to be very charming. And I love that the Lord showed me so vividly what was coming when I first saw it. We all know the story and maybe even remember the children's song about the wise man who built his house upon a rock. It's in Matthew 7 and it's verses 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the wind blew and beat against that house and it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. You know, Luke tells the same story in Luke 6, 47 through 49. And the Lord is our rock, and it says so in Psalms 18, 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Friends, the story of the house is pertinent today. The man and the woman who dug deep down and built their house on the solid rock still experienced the flood. And because the Lord is the rock, the flood doesn't shake them. Be that person. Be the one that is not shaken when the flood arrives. I believe the Lord is about to shake the earth again. I don't know how or why or what exactly, but it just feels like change is coming. I know in my knower that the hand of the Lord is about to show up. And the great lesson in the parable above is that we do not need to worry. In fact, we are told not to worry. We are to lean on the Lord and pray and worship and sing and rejoice and praise his name. So let us remember that the Lord is the rock and he is our rock. So Lord, help us to be unshaken. We trust you. Lord, we know a flood is coming. Help us in our unbelief. Help us to be your hands and your feet during the time of the shaking, during the time of flood. Help us be faithful, for you, Lord, are faithful. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Betty. Hey, Susan, you want to see the quilt real quick? My friend Carrie did it. Isn't that cute? I love it, and I love that she used scriptures. Okay, so as always, we will be signing off. Um, we will post this video up on uh, YouTube shortly. Today or tomorrow, I don't know. We always say today, and then if something happens with the weather and the network, who knows what's going to, you know, how it'll happen. But we'll put that up there. If you liked it, please share if um, it is... Um, helpful or if you have any ideas any suggestions about what we could be talking about next week i'll be thinking about it um let just let us know and we can sure i'll teach anything i know anything at all so let me know what that is if you have any ideas so friends know that you are loved and know that you are prayed over and um be well stay well and i hope to see you soon we'll talk to you later bye bye